Hi, my name is Ali Shersavar from Breacher Digital and in this short video we are going to talk about the size of the injected signal that you need in order to get a good clean measurement. The size of the injected signal uh, is very, very important, in particular if you've got a very high gain system. And if you don't set it up correctly, you may get the wrong results. So first let's uh, have a look at the setup. Uh, here I have got a uh, flyback bias supply. This one is non-isolated and uh, we use this to uh, teach um, uh, non-isolated bias supply design in, in the workshop. We also do isolated power supplies, but that is a topic for a different video. I'm injecting a signal via the body 100 across the uh, injection resistor, and we have designed this to have a very, very high gain at uh, low frequencies. Um, the, uh, the loads are set there and there, and now we're going to have a look at it on the body 100 to see what we are measuring uh, with regard to the uh, frequency response of the uh, power supply. As you can see, I have got a beautiful uh, plot here of this power supply. Uh, very nice and clean, very high gain at low frequencies, nice crossover, nice uh, phase margin. So the, the instrument is perfectly capable of plotting very high quality, high gain power supplies. So how do we go about selecting the size of the injected signal? We know that with respect to frequency, our power supply has got very high gain at low frequencies. So that means that it's going to reject any disturbance and therefore we're going to have to increase the size of the injected signal at low frequencies. So if you will, I've got a big sine wave that I'm injecting into my power supply at low frequencies. Yeah? However, if I continue injecting this large signal at higher frequencies, uh, because the gain is coming down, there comes a point whereby I enter in the large signal analysis region, and therefore this large sine wave will start to interrupt the correct operation of the power supply. So what I would like to do is at mid frequencies, I'd like to reduce the size of my injected signal. Then, as the frequency goes higher, let's say you get to a region whereby you have designed your output to EMI filter, you want to be able to see um, the, uh, the, the shape of the, of the gain and phase without too much noise. However, most power supplies are very, very noisy at high frequencies. And therefore, in order to make sure that the size of the injected signal is a larger than the amount of switching noise that is around at higher frequencies, you want to increase the size of your signal again. So if I were to plot the height of the injected signal across the entire frequency range that I am uh, plotting, the profile of it would look something like this. So I start with large amplitude, I would reduce it to a certain level, then I keep it pretty much constant, and then at high frequencies, I take it back up again. And that is a very classic profile of the injected signal for a power supply. And of course, Bodhi 100 allows you to do this with the shaped level uh, options that you have got, which we're going to talk about next. So here you see the, uh, um, the body plot of the power supply that we talked about earlier. Uh, if I press the shaped level button, um, you can see the profile that uh, I created um, earlier on on the board. So I start with a large signal uh, and low frequencies, then I reduce the amplitude of the signal, and then I inject a, a small signal at mid frequencies, and then I increase it again. Now, one thing that would be interesting to see is uh, what happens if we inject two larger signals. So I can add an extra point here, and let's make it very big. This could be so big that it could even uh, trip the uh, current trip of the power supply. Uh, so I put a signal here, and if your injected signal is too large, then this curve here will get smaller, so this amplitude will fall. So now that I'm injecting a large signal around 11, uh, 15 kilohertz, you should see that, there we go, you can see that it is falling down, and this is a classic example of when uh, the size of the signal is too big. If I delete this point at the next trace, so here is my uh, uh, point, if I delete it so that the signal is small again, you should see that rise again, and there we go, and that is just a very good example of how you can adjust the size of the signal to get the optimum plot.